And we're back, YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. As always, I appreciate that. And today, let's talk about Bizarre Earthquake. It's kind of a strange and bizarre title for a point-and-click adventure game, because that's what it is. About two seismologists, I think they're called seismologists, anyway, girl and boy, who are investigating an earthquake site. And it's kind of an original story, I haven't seen it anywhere else, so that makes it, well, original, in a way. The game features some really nice backdrops and somewhat larger characters, which I like. But the animations are really stiff. It really feels like an amateuristic game overall. What I like about the game is that you can switch between the different characters, so you can sort of switch on the fly. So you can play the girl or play the boy and switch between them, which is really nice. It gives sort of a, a different perspective on the things that are going on, and it gives you some extra puzzles to solve, which is nice. There is no audio dialogue in this game. Uh, English text is really awkwardly translated from Turkish, I believe, because this is originally a Turkish game. But it, it sort of gives the game a sort of campy flavor overall, you know, just just the awkwardness of the of the uh, of the dialogue, so to speak. Now, what's strange about this game is that it doesn't get the fundamentals of a really good point-and-click adventure game down there are some major flaws here for instance i mean every screen there is an abundance of items right it, it gives you all kinds of names of items that you'll see i mean only a few you can pick up and use which makes the whole thing kind of confusing because you're thinking should i use this somehow or should i pick it up but you can't now the game progression is kind of casual this game will not test your puzzle solving skills except for a few instances that were just awful and really sort of strange so i had to resort to walkthrough but that could be me but you're basically told what you need to do but the thing is sometimes the execution of a very logical puzzle is a bit illogical if you know what i mean i mean for instance there is this part in the game where you need to restart a generator and the thing requires gasoline. So now you have a car, you have a hose, and you need something to put in to the, like put in the gasoline into, and there's a jerry can in the shack nearby. But the problem is you can't pick up the jerry can. So turns out you need to pick up a water bottle from the kitchen and use that with the hose and the gasoline, and then you can sort of start the generator. Now who would have known, right? I mean, it's kind of strange. It seems to be more logical to pick up the jerry can and use that with the gasoline, but no, you need to pick up a water bottle. But anyway, that's sort of a, you know, that's why I think it doesn't really get the, the basics down very well, the, the point and click basics. Also, the game requires you to pick up items that are not visible on the screen. I mean, as I said, there's an abundance of items, but sometimes the game just has you look for something and it's you can't see it on the screen it's it's somewhere hidden behind bushes you know and it's just it's frustrating at times but still this is kind of a chill game right you can play this at the background while you're doing other things and it is kind of relaxing it's non-violent which i can appreciate at times so yeah you can tell that the developer put in some time and uh yeah i think you know it's not awful all the way through right and it's an original story as i said so i st stuck around for the story basically very mediocre i still liked it so that's basically my review so thank you for watching see you next time